This is Lauren Sevian, and you're listening to Sophia's Big Band Corner on Jazz London Radio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sophia Alexandra Hall, and you're listening to Sophia's Big Band Corner on the Jazz London Radio. And I'm currently backstage here at Ronnie Scott's during the Mingus Big Band's week long residency here with baritone saxophonist Lauren Sevian. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. That's How fantastic. Are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm great. So I saw the opening performance last night, and it was. Oh, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, the audience were whooping, like, <laughs> just, as, just as the name as the, the name of the big band was stated. Something I really loved was um, the bassist, Boris, Boris Kozlov. Yeah, yeah. Boris Kozlov. He mentioned that the band is like, uh, the club is like a second home to you guys. Yeah. Because yeah. you guys have come over here for the last, I think he said 25 years or something. Yeah, ridiculous. very long time. Yeah. How, yeah. how long have you been with the band? So I've been playing with the Mingus Band since 2003, so about the last 15 years, 15 and a half years. That's amazing. And so I know, I can't believe it's been that long. It's, it's really crazy. <laughs> so, so how old were you when you joined, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I, I, would, I think I was 24, if that, that makes make sense. sense. Yeah, well, it, it does was... make sense. <laughs> so were you one of the youngest in the band? Yeah, at the time I was the youngest. Oh Not gosh. anymore. But... <laughs> That's okay. Now I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> That's amazing. So you just graduated at this point? At that point, I had been out of school for maybe two, three years, I guess. Yeah. Sure. That's amazing. Were you, uh, by any chance, the first girl in the Mingus Big Band? Um, there had been other women, I think, over the years that had played with the band. Um, but I, I, and I, I could totally be wrong about this. But from what I understand, as far as like a reg, like first female regular member of the band that's that's incredible like congratulations thank you <laughs> um it was interesting because last night there were two girls on stage there was lauren and there was also helen or was it mm-hmm. helen? yeah helen song yes. yeah helen on the keys and they were probably featured the most in terms of solos which i quite <laughs> <enjoyed>. <laughs> felt a lot of girl power there yeah honestly um so you attended manhattan school of music yes i did Awesome. Um, and so was Barry your, your main study or were you just a general sax player when you arrived? Um, I had at that point pretty much knew I wanted to just play baritone. I really had been playing mostly alto and some baritone, I would say, my senior year. But I knew that once I got to Manhattan School, I was going to completely or at least attempt to completely switch over to baritone. And that was going to be my specialized you know, instrument. But I already knew that I wanted to do that it was more a matter of oh I had sort of some other commitments at the time when I was in high school playing alto even though sure. I was just itching to play the baritone more <laughs> so that's usually. insane like um so were other people in your class who played saxophone were they very sure they wanted to play tenor or soprano or were you different in that way that you just knew you wanted to play Barry well I would say for the most part Pretty much everybody there at the time was playing like they were, you know, it was it was pretty specific. Okay. You know, some 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 people played alto and tenor. Some people played barry and alto. You know, it's like usually somebody played, you know, like doubled on some other sure. saxophone for the. But for me, I just I really didn't want to do that. I mean, I might have played a little bit of alto my first year, but mainly just. Like, oh, let me just bust out the alto and see if I can still, you know, play it. <laughs> but then I just really didn't want to at all. I just wanted to play the baritone. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> how long how long have you been playing the barry? Like, when did you first pick it up? I, th- I would say I first tried it my junior year of high school. Um, and then at that point, I knew, I think, you know, I eventually wanted to switch over. But then it just, the, every time I sort of, every time I had played it, it was just, okay, I'm being convinced, like, you know, step by step, <laughs> this is what, this is what I wanted to play. What, what about the Barry made you, made you want to play it? I just felt like, you know, it was my voice, you know, and I'd been playing alto for many years and I really liked it, but I just felt, I didn't feel connected to it. And, um, when I first picked up the baritone, I immediately felt this, like, resonance when I played it and that I something that I just didn't really get from playing the alto 
you know, and I felt like I could, you know, eventually express myself on that instrument, even though at the time I didn't really, not that I really understood the concept of what that was when I was in high school, maybe sure. a little bit, but I just knew there was something inside of me that I, I just knew that, okay, this is, this is going to be my instrument, you know, and the more that I played it, the more I just felt like, yes, this is, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. Awesome. Were there, were there particular um, Barry, Barry sax players that you looked up to during the high school days and that made you want to go to conservatoire? Well, um, when I... Well, it was, it was interesting because when I first started playing the baritone, my, um, my teacher at the time in, in Long Island, this um, Jeff Lang was his name, and he was he played all the saxophones, but he was primarily a baritone player. Oh, so when cool. I, he was the one that kind of convinced me to play the baritone, because at first I was like, "What? This thing is massive. I don't want <laughs> to so have to carry that around. What are you crazy?" And he said, "Just try it. I really feel like you're gonna love it." And I was kind of okay, you know. And I try it, and then I was hooked. <laughs> so. Um, and then he introduced me to, you know, he gave me a bunch of Pepper Adams and, you know, Jerry Mulligan. Yeah. And I was really, like, I loved both, but I really was so into Pepper just as far as the sound goes. I just, I so wanted to make the baritone sound like that. You know, it's kind of bright and powerful and barking in a way. Um, so I was listening to mainly Pepper and, I, and Jerry, and I didn't really know too much more about baritone players until I got into college you know um, but there was also someone that she was I don't even know if she's still playing because I haven't I hadn't seen her name around but when I was in high school they have these bands called the Grammy bands okay and it's kind of like an all either all regional or all American and the year before me there was this, a female baritone player and I, I thought that was so cool you know and she was I mean, in my opinion, as far as, you know, people that were in the band, like, I thought she was really the best player overall. <laughs> and not even the fact that she was, a, you know, a, a girl, she just really could play, you know, and I, and I was, I thought, well, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to be at that level, you know? Yeah. Um, but then when, once I was in school, I, you know, I studied with, you know, I got to study with Joe Temperley and, you know, he taught me a lot about, um, sound you know and how to s sing through the, the instrument you know um but then when i brought up i like pepper adams he was like oh in a scottish <laughs> accent i'm not even gonna try to do it but he's you know sound wise i don't think he was his favorite i'll just put it that way you know i was like what you don't like pepper adams <laughs> But it, it was great studying with him, you know, because he really taught me a lot about, about the instrument, you know, the pepper, you know, and then, of course, like, you know, Gary Simulian and Ronnie Cuber and, I mean, it was a lot. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> a lot yeah, of right, right, right. So after you finished at Manhattan, did you stay in New York or did you? Yeah, I stayed well? in New York. I've, I've, you know, I grew up in Long Island which is, you know, pretty close to New yeah. York City, and I, you know, I just moved there right after high school and Went stayed, <laughs> been living there ever since, you know, so it's definitely one of the places to be, to have opportunity to go out, just to go out and listen to music, I mean, when I first came to New York, I couldn't even, I would just step out my, my apartment building and three blocks away was... Now it's called Smoke Jazz Club, but at the time it was called Augie's, and it was this, you know, now it's a little more upscale, but it used to be this little hole in the wall, oh, nice. and actually I met this baritone player there who, uh, I mean, he passed away um, a year after I came to New York, but James Farnsworth, he had uh, played with um, Ray Charles, and he, he comes from the musical family, his brother Joe Farnsworth is a great drummer, and John Farnsworth, tenor player. Um, but, and also, you know, I used to go and see Cecil Payne, you know, he's another one that just, these legendary guys like four or five blocks away from where I lived, you know, every Amazing. night of the week I could go, you know, so it's kind of tough because I was in school, but I wanted to be out <laughs> and hang, you know, so you had to, I had to balance all that, but it was, being in New York is, it's 
it's great. <laughs> How did you end up in the Mingus Big Band? Um, it's interesting because I, I was playing in this funk band. Um, I don't know if you know Otto Ravati at all. She's a great tenor saxophone player. Um, but she's married to Randy Brecker. Um, okay. And uh, so I got a chance to know him a little bit through the, the funk band that she had. And um, when we did our record, um, the guy who engineered the record was playing Barry in the Mingus Big Band at the time, uh, this guy named Mike Sim. And um, he got me to sub for him one time. And then, you know, Sue didn't know a lot of baritone, baritone players, so it was, it was I, I don't want to say it was easy, but like, you know, just to get in the mix, because she, again, it's, it's like, it's, it's really like a family kind of a thing, you know, and a lot of the times you get into the band, I would say you by recommendation of somebody else mm. that's already in the band, or you go and sit in and, you know, she gets a chance to, you know, hear you. But I did this, you know, this, it's funny because I felt like the first gig I did with them really didn't go very well, <laughs> at least in my mind, and, um... And then I thought to myself, oh, she's not going to call me ever again. But then she called me. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you are 15 years later. Like. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and it's really, um, it's just, it's been really, really amazing experience. I just want to say playing with them. And those guys feel like family to me, you know. Um, I know that the Mingus Big Band isn't your only sort of group. Um, I believe you've played with some other big bands as well. I've done a lot of big band stuff. Like, you know, I've also done some work with the Diva Jazz Orchestra um, on and off throughout the years. So, um, what is the Diva? So, Diva is an all female big band it's led by this drummer, Sherry Miracle. Alexa plays in the band and um, some other, you know, a lot of fantastic uh, musicians are in that group. Um, and then I had done a show with them a few years ago with um, Maurice Hines. So I was in this pr- production, it was tapping through life, it's like an off-Broadway show. Um, so it was nice, like, getting to, you know, because it's, an, like, in a way it's like a network and of female musicians, and you meet a lot of women that you not, maybe ne- not necessarily meet otherwise, you know. Um, so I've worked with them, um, I've worked with the BCU Orchestra. Amazing. Um, I've done the, um, I've worked with the Dizzy Gillespie All-Star Big Band, um, uh, Rob Newbanks Big Band, um, uh, New York City based Big Band, George G's Swing Orchestra, I play with them sometimes, um, and then a lot of kind of, you know, I've done like, I always say the ghost bands, like, um, Artie Shaw. Orchestra and Harry James and Sandy Goodman, (laughs) (laughs) the ghost bands. Kind of earlier on, I would say, I, you know, my, um, I played with them a lot more in my twenties. Logged a lot of bus bus rides with those groups. (laughs) You would just take a bus everywhere. It's like, where's the gig? Oh, it's in Texas. Okay, yeah, we're taking a bus down. (laughs) Now, actually, we did a lot of stuff in the south. Like, you would take a bus down to say, you know, like. From New York to Georgia or Florida and do a lot of stuff down there and you know the Carolinas and it was fun though I mean we had great times and I was really young too so I didn't really you know care about being on the bus all day it was fun to me you know and then you would get to the gig and you're like oh wow okay gotta play now and then you would just go to bed and wake up the next morning and do it all over again oh. for weeks and then um so you have a quartet and a quintet now yes so i have a quartet which is the lsq and then does that stand for something or uh just the lauren sevian quartet yeah (laughs) (laughs) no i know it's but you don't even think about like that's what it actually is um and then i have a quintet with alexa called lsat and a lot of, and it's funny because the same, you no, know, people ask the same question, like, well, what's LSAT? What does that stand for? And I was like, well, it's actually our initials, you know, LSAT. Not the law school exam yeah, that we right? have. <laughs> <laughs> What's like, funny is that joke. When, well, that's when we, when Alexa and I first formed LSAT, um, we kept getting these, you know, and we would post pictures of each other, like, hanging out together, and, uh, 
we would, you know, hashtag, hashtag LSAT. Oh. And we started getting comments and <laughs> follows from this, like, LSAT prep class, oh prep, prep course, and, you know, study hard. And, you know, we're, we're meanwhile, there's, like, pictures of us with drinks, you know, like, hey. <laughs> It's like study hard. We're like, oh yeah, we're studying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and you have two albums out as well. Um, yeah. Is this with a quint- with the quintet? Yeah. So the new uh, the new record, which came out in May, um, Bliss. Uh, that's both quartet and quintet. So. Uh, I believe three of the tunes on there are quintet with Alexa, okay, and the so rest yeah. is quartet. And um, on the record is Robert Rodriguez on piano, um, uh, Christian McBride on bass, and uh, EJ Strickland on drums, and then Alexa on alto. Awesome. So, yeah, they're amazing people and musicians, so the, it was just, it was really nice, great great day you know <laughs> are they all original tracks yeah all originals um and then alexa one of alexa's tunes amazing um should we play one of those right now sure what would you like um well why don't we play an lsat track um there's one called lamb and bunny <laughs> awesome here it is Thank you. 
first album was Blueprint and it was released uh, 2009 okay yeah um, so on that record is uh, George Colligan on piano Boris Kozlov on bass and Jonathan Blake on drums and that was basically the um, rhythm section at the time in the Mingus band you know and I just I knew I wanted to record with those with those guys I mean and then it was my first record, so I was really nervous. And but at the same time, I felt like I had waited, you know, the right amount of time before doing something. I just didn't yeah, want to put definitely. something out and have it not really be representative. And um, so same thing like all originals, and um, we just had a lot of fun in the studio, you know, because those guys are, you know, silly. <laughs> so they made everything, you know, just just really easy. Amazing. What would you say is the main difference between the two albums? Um, Apart from the players. <laughs> yeah, I mean, different, you know, different band entirely. Um, I'd like to think that Bliss is, Bliss in a way is kind of more, I would say, like kind of a coming of age, for lack of a better expression, because, um, you know, basically I went 10 years without recording anything and I kind of I that was really sort of a specific you know it was kind of intentional okay. you know on my part but there was a lot of just kind of stuff I was going through you know personal and whatnot and um so bliss is um I feel like bliss is more of a concept album blueprint was like okay here are all these originals that I wrote and some of them have some meaning and some of them don't. And, sure. But I felt like, okay, I presented some strong material. Um, whereas with Bliss, um, the, I had a clear idea of, okay, this is what the album is about. Each tune is about, you know, a different thing. So I'll just, you know, explain what I'm actually talking about. <laughs> so it's, it's a really simple concept of Bliss is about about love and each each track is is a different type is a is a is the is the message of a different type of love okay um so for example bliss the the title track i wrote for my husband eric and uh lamb and bunny i wrote for alexa so you have you know the friendship like the love you know, between two, that you can have between two friends, the love between, you know, uh, two, two partners. And then, uh, the triple water, the first, the first track on the record, um, is really, is really about self love and self discovery. Cool. Um, so anyway, you know, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. to tell you about each track, but that's what the overall message is. And I, and it was, I, I really, I knew about that beforehand. Um, my, producer Mark Free from Positone I mean he in general he likes the records to have some kind of message mm -hmm. so you know he had asked me like think about what what you want the record to be but I I was like oh, I already know what it's about nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so That's it's awesome. just yeah sometimes articulating it you know we have music to do that for us so sometimes I articulate things through you know words and meaning is a little bit more challenging True, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you mentioned you play a lot with Alexa Tarantino. Are there any other projects that you guys are involved in? 
Um, well, we have this uh, concert series that uh, myself, Alexa, uh, Roxy Cost, tenor saxophonist, and Amanda Monaco, uh, guitarist, the four of us each are leading our own uh, project at this uh, venue in New York City in Queens, Flushing Town Hall, and it's called, the, the concert series is called Lioness. So it's, um, the idea behind it is to, is presenting female-led projects to, you know, an audience that may, may or may not have been exposed to seeing, you know, seeing female musicians. Um, and also Flushing Town Hall is really the kind of place where I think culturally it's a, it's a great, you know, it's, it's really the, the audience there, I feel like, will be really receptive to that. So, so far, um, Roxy had her concert there in September, which went really well and was really well received. And then Alexa's concert Sunday, and I'm not going to make it, so I'm sort of sad about that. <laughs> um, but that's one more thing Alexa and I, um, you know, do together. And we've done stuff together, like, over the summer. She, she has a uh, jazz camp that she that she runs and put together so uh, she had me come up there and do a like a guest artist like awesome. thing with with that and um, in April this jazz festival I go to each year um, in Eau Claire Wisconsin we we went there together and did you know a, a, you know a master class together and we you know performed at the at the festival so sweet yeah and you're also involved with the jazz at Lincoln Center right. right so and yeah so we both actually teach for uh, Jazz for Lincoln Center, Jazz at Lincoln Center. I direct um, the Young Women's Jazz Orchestra, which is an all-female uh, big band. The ages are, it's mostly high school, but some, you know, junior high students that are interested. Like last year, we actually had a, quite a few eighth graders um, in, the, wow. in the band. So, and the age is ranging from 13 to 18. Nice. And I've never directed a big band before. I mean, I've been, you know, guest conducting or whatever, but it's completely sure. different when you're directing and you, you're the one that's in charge. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. You, know, I, you mean, I get to pick the material? Is that, <laughs> is that what happens? Oh, okay. That's really cool. Okay. So, and we had our um, inaugural semester. Um, this year and um, it was just it was funny because you know we had like two rehearsals and the the guys the director of the youth programs like oh I've already got you know some performances lined up for your guys I'm like whoa let's slow down you know <laughs> we just got here <laughs> but they you know I mean already being professional at that age you know so I just try to try to instill in them you know what that actually means and you know, if the if the if the concert's at seven, that means you're here at six. Yeah. You know, not like be walking in at six fifty five. That's then you're late. <laughs> but I really didn't I mean, for the most part everybody was, you know, on time and I didn't really have to worry too much, you know, they just came and played us. Okay. It makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> totally. Oh, I love it. Are there any future concerts that you'd like to tell us about or projects you're involved in that you're excited about? Um, well, definitely the so at my performance at the Flushing at Flushing Town Hall is going to be in December. So Helen will actually be on that gig. Helen Sung and oh, cool. Christian McBride will be on it, and EJ Strickland. So I'm really looking forward to that. When in December? Uh, December sixteenth. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, and um, I've got some. So in December, another gig I have coming up was with the Jazz Houston Orchestra it's directed by Vincent Gardner trombonist with um, he's with the Jazz Lincoln Center Orchestra Sweet. so he started this group um, you know of a lot of a lot of the players are um, Houston based or have some connection to Houston um, and I'm sort of one of the random okay. <laughs> people from New York <laughs> that that does the that does the gig and so we're playing um, I think it's December 2nd we have a gig down there, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, after that, I'm doing a guest artist thing um, at this uh, university out in San Francisco. Oh, amazing. Um, 
And then also uh, a kind of fun random gig coming up is in November um, performing with the comedian Dennis Leary. We've been playing with his band on and off for the last several years. And he had this show, Rescue Me. So he used to do a comedy tour every year to promote the show. And I played in the house band. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was a lot. He's a really super cool guy. And um, uh, he, you know, when, he, when we first put the band together, he's like, I want an all female horn section. You know, I just want the <laughs> girls to look like, you know, smoking hot and all this stuff. And we're like, <laughs> okay, <know>. whatever. <laughs> you know, but, but, the funny thing is that, like, I think at first, he, yeah, he just wanted, like, the aesthetic thing. Yeah. But he was like, oh, my God, you guys are amazing. You can yes. actually play. <laughs> oh, and God. he wasn't saying, and, like, he's such a cool dude. Like, he's a very, I mean, he's a super smart guy, like, you know, and, 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 and as, as far as, like, you know, like, the, like I would I would call him the anti misogynist, you know. Okay. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just because I know him from working with him, um, but I I think he also like he's into that like he's really into the girl power thing too. Nice. So when he sees like girls with instruments, he's just like, oh my god, this is so awesome, you know. So we, like every year, since even though we don't do the tours anymore, every year we do this benefit um, up in Boston at. Uh, at the TD Garden, which is like where the Bruins play, <laughs> so I'm like playing in this giant, you know, like hockey, hockey rig, basically. Oh I mean, obviously the ice is covered. Okay, yeah. <laughs> as an extra element to it, really sliding around. Can you around. imagine if like the stage was on the rink? That'd be kind of fun. It's like, wait, it is can a comedy we, can we show. Try right? that. Yeah, it is a comedy show after all. You've all got to wear skates. <laughs> but it's so much fun because like, basically every year it's this big reunion of all all of us that were you know on the tour together so oh, that's sweet yeah so Amazing. a lot of fun stuff coming up well thank you very much for coming on the show you're our you're second welcome. ever guest oh woo. So this is very exciting that first, was exciting first female first, first, <laughs> first yeah. everything <laughs> first sex of miss um yeah amazing let's play one more track off your album what would you like uh let's listen to triple water it's the first track on the album amazing this is triple water and this has been Sophia Alexander Hall interviewing Lauren Sevian. Thank you. 
Ha <laughs> ha 